Carl and Liam here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Life. GBHBL.com for sure. And it is the season. So we have reviewed a lot of Christmas horror movies, themed horror movies over the years. From the ones that are garish and have the lights up everywhere to the ones that are lazy as fuck and just use it as a backdrop to the ones that are infamous because they feature a killer Santa. We've seen a lot of them. We've reviewed a lot of them over on the website and some on the YouTube channel. You know what to do. Simply check them out there. But we are going to choose each of us three of our personal favorites, not necessarily the best one, not even necessarily a top three, but three that we think, yep, these are banging. If you haven't seen them, go check them out. That's what we're going to do. We're going to run you through it now. And I will get us started with basically what might be the most easy one of all. It's my always recommendation to go check out. It is, of course, Silent Night, Deadly Night, the 1984 slasher film. It is a classic for all the reasons people say it is. It hasn't aged well. It is very cheesy and silly at times. But it is of a time. It is of that period. And it fits wonderfully. It's controversial because of what it was at the time. Weirdly, it got more controversy, even though a film about a killer Santa called Christmas Evil came out a few years before it, but Silent Night, Deadly Night got this shit. It's got one of the best horror movie covers um, as well. It's just a fun, dark, twisted story that shows psychological breakdown themed around Christmas perfectly, a killer and a Santa. I love it. I love it. I love it every time I see it. Plus, Linnea Quigley dies in an incredible way in that movie. Yeah, I mean, this is quite good for me because I'm gonna have to. I might have to take some of your recommendations and go check them out because, admittedly, I struggled a little bit with this because I haven't actually seen too many Christmas horror movies. When I tried to look up what my favorite ones were, I was like, "Hang on a minute, how okay. many have I actually seen?" Because obviously, most of a lot of them have been reviewed by you on the site, so I don't really like seek them out to watch them because then I they're not. I wouldn't review them because you have done that. So, and also like Christmas is probably like the one time of time of year where um, I don't really like associate Christmas with watching like a horror, like a horror movie like, I love horror every genre but I normally Christmas I'm watching something like The Grinch or Home Alone right. of course the greatest movie ever Christmas movie ever made Jingle All The Way <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. god oh my, I do not agree with that on people I'm not joking <laughs> but anyway I did manage to put three together and I'll start at number three which is uh, Krampus from 2015 oh of course um, yeah I just thought um not only does the film have a surprisingly great cast, it as well had its tongue planted firmly in its cheek. It's a horror comedy after all, which made it that much more enjoyable. I love the concept. It has a sort of B-movie vibe to it, which is nice. Um, in a more, I think it's more in a positive way than negative for the film. Mm. Um, also, it has a nice bleak ending, which I'm always a sucker for in, with horror. And um, it's especially enjoyable when uh, seeing, yeah, you expect something maybe a bit more happier because it's Christmas themed. It might have like a bit more uplifting. But actually, no, the ending is quite quite uh, bleak which is nice yeah big fan of the film as most people are as well also one with with uh an incredible original cover not talking about the one with him holding the snow glove i'm talking about the blue one the one on the outside wonderful wonderful cover but yeah big fan mm. of the film uh, i think most people i see it and say yeah that's a that's a fun movie yeah yeah i like it <laughs> all through the house from 2015 so this is a very silly tongue-in-cheek absolute gore fest of a Christmas slasher horror. One that does a, it's a throwback to the eighties, but with much improved visuals. It is a very simple setup, a cycle dressed in a sound outfit, going house to house on a quiet suburban neighborhood, slaughtering those inside. However, it's got a very, very, very inventive and dare I say, questionably fucked up twist. While isn't particularly well hidden, it is a lot of fun. But mm. what you'll remember from this film this is, to me, one of the goriest Christmas horrors I'd ever seen. Also one, though, that absolutely went batshit crazy for Christmas and was like, we are throwing everything, every bauble light we can at this. It is insane. It's all through the house. I, weirdly enough, really like this track, uh, film. Yeah, I mean, that's what you want to see, that you want to see, like, it's going to be a Christmas horror film. You want to see Christmas everywhere. It's nothing worse. You know, I've seen some Christmas horror movies that uh, reviewed for the site that have like just had like a Christmas tree there or something like that and it's yeah. not really like a big part of the film I want to see it like be an integral part of the plot and everything mm -hmm. but yeah no that sounds cool man I'll have to check it out <laughs> alright my next one is a movie called Anna and the Apocalypse it is essentially a British parody of High School Musical but with zombies Yeah. so it's cool it's a musical and I'm not normally a huge fan of musicals but even I have to admit that uh, the songs are really well choreographed 
performed and just the writing of them are, is really is really well done and they managed to blend musical horror comedy and christmas surprisingly well and to mash it all together really nicely and um you can tell there's a clear inspiration from other british zombie com comedy movies such as Shaun of the dead and on the whole i definitely think it's worth checking out so we didn't watch uh, an, an apocalypse until uh, last year for the first time. Um, I am actually weird enough a fan of musical horrors because as long as they have their tongue janked in their cheek, it's a major mm -hmm. part for me. An apocalypse yeah. does nail that, but also has some incredibly touchy, uh, sorry, um, catchy uh, tunes. However, mm -hmm. I will point out and remind people that for all its whimsical and fun, an apocalypse has moments that stopped me in my track and generally didn't expect and were like. Don't do ah. Oh, I, I don't want to spoil shit, but mm. you know some stuff in that I was like, oh man, that's horrible. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got it's got a lot of layers. It does. It's sure. a fun movie. It's a fun movie, particularly as it comes from this country. Mm -hmm. My third one is a new one. It was released in 2022, December 2022. In fact, it is the Leech. Uh, this is a easily the Christmas horror movie that I've ever watched. Where I just sat on the edge of my seat, going, I'm wishing it was over because I've never experienced something so tense, so uncomfortable for nearly 80 odd minutes. It is fucking brilliant where there's a very small cast and it's simply this, a priest struggling to deliver the Christian faith in a town that no longer cares. Preaching a really positive message in a sermon is basically forced to live up to his own words when he helps a homeless guy and agrees to let him stay at his house. And it's the odd couple dialed up to 11 it is uncomfortable it takes incredible turns where you generally won't know quite where it's going if it means it's psychological damage or if it's satanic stuff it is insane it also has one of the most depressing endings i'd seen in a while and it is beyond festive because it starts in wintry festive build up but ends with Christmas and Christmas trees and lights and you name it. And I don't want to, I don't want to spoil the ending, but that ending with the Christmas music playing and what happens, you just be, you're sitting there going, well, I feel really great now, but it is, I generally recommend it. It's from Eric Pennykoff who wrote and directed it. It's got a small cast of mainly just three people. One of them um, in particular is like nowadays, one of my all time favorite actors and creators called Jeremy Gardner. Check out the leech. You will love it. Wow, man, you sell it pretty. You sell it really well. I definitely might have to check that one out. So, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> All right, don't know if there's going to be any debate from you on this one, but like I said, I did struggle a little bit, but I've put in Gremlins. <laughs> now, right, I mean, right. Let's before you go any further. I understand what the debate is. Is Gremlins is it a horror movie? Isn't it a horror movie? And so on. But you look at Gremlins, and it often gets put on the horror as well. You watch Gremlins one; it has horror elements. I, I, I'm on the fence about this one. Me personally, I don't see it as a horror movie because I see it as too kid friendly. But when I contrast Gremlins 1 with Gremlins 2, there is a mm -hmm. clear tone difference. A clear tone difference. And I'm aware of the elements of Gremlins that can downright be violent, nasty and unsuitable yeah. for children. Yeah, it's, it's, it's what you would consider to be like a PG-13 horror movie. Maybe, you know, it's, it's got, because it's got so many elements to it. But I just think there's just so much to love about Gremlins from the fantastic puppetry at work and the amazing other practical effects that are there to the abundance of memorable moments involving Gizmo being adorable and the other Gremlins with their cartoonish murderous hijinks. It manages to be funny, scary and whimsical all at, all at once. When I think of Christmas and horror, this one always, it always just springs to mind, even though, like I said, it's more on the PG-ish side. It's kind of like, it just has a lot of layers similar to Anna and the Apocalypse, just where it has the horror, has some horror elements, but also just has like funny, silly moments, and also has that sort of whimsical feel to it that a Christmas movie should have. Yeah, and um, I think it is the best Christmas horror movie that I've seen. So there you go. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a ma that's massively debatable. I wouldn't agree with that at all. But I understand Gremlins is an amazing movie. Weird enough to that not nowadays, I'm more of a fan of the sequel because of how batshit crazy the yeah. sequel. It does um, take it and dial it up to like 11. Yeah, yeah, and weirdly enough, I'm a bigger fan of that than I am the original, but I recognise the quality of Gremlins. I'd be a fool not to, but there are so many people. There really are. Uh, Good Tidings is a better better, um, better watch out is another great one I want to throw in there. Cadaver Christmas is a fucking blast as well. There are some being released this very month that have promise that I'm intrigued to check out as well. So people are still braving and willing to do it. It's not all about the classics either. You just got to kind of 
something you've got to kind of dig because you put on Christmas horror into Google, all you get is the usual stuff that's been released for years. So you've got to kind of go look and dig and you will find some quality. Hopefully we've given you some here that are well worth checking out. But if you've got any recommendations that we might not have seen, you know what to do. Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. If you really liked what you saw, consider donating to keep the website and channel running by buying us a coffee via our coffee page or picking up some merch from our big cartel store. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as via our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as listen to our interviews via SoundCloud, Apple Music, and Spotify. Just search for GBHBL. Games, horror, and heavy metal. What else is life for?